Don't tread on me. Don't tread on me. Don't tread on me. Love it or leave it. The globalists have now signed petitions. I have them right here. We've done articles on it. Paul Watson has one. They're saying arrest us, imprison us, strip us of citizenship, put us in labor camps. Uh, I mean, they're getting 20, 30,000 signatures for these. So we're seeing who the Democrats are. This is what socialists always do. Once things start imploding, they go, just put the workers in a camp. At first, it's make them come out and, you know, dig ditches. And it's all about nobody's running your life. I mean, we know where this leads. But the globalists don't care. They want total domination. They want to start a civil war, marching the military and police off to confiscate our guns. Obama is certainly looking at, as the NRA documented and is now admitted, on banning all semi-autos where you got to turn them in. Because they don't want us to start a peaceful states' rights movement and restore the republic. They know you're waking up. They know Europe's waking up. This is a banking cartel takeover, as Ron Paul said. I'm going to play that clip in about seven, eight minutes after constitutional lawyer and advisor to Ron Paul, Edwin Vieira, leaves us. Uh, doctor, I'm going to try to give you the floor because I'm so excited at this historical crest. S repeat to, me, to folks what you told me during the break about Ron Paul and the mantle and where we're going and that, you're, uh, that you concur and that you're going to talk to him and everybody else should. And we're going to get Bruce Fine, constitutional lawyer and advisor to Ron Paul on. Lou Rockwell, I'm going to call all his sources. I'm going to get a hold of Ron Paul. And I'm going to say now is the time to step into the leadership to organize as your final you know, incredible work. Uh, in, you know, in, in, I mean, this is such a great work that we're talking about here. To, to build the foundation going into this tyranny of the resistance. This is it. I know Ron Paul, who's accepted the draft twice, will accept it a third time. And uh, he has thrown some of the little minions out of Campaign for Liberty that were saying, don't talk about the New World Order. He has exposed the global government in his speech. Dr. Vieira, what is your battle plan? What is your idea? That's why we got you on to, to get these ideas out, to set brush fires, and then to codify uh, the plan based on our forebearer's successful operation. Well, as I said to you during the, uh, the break, Alex, uh, the first step is for Ron Paul to come forward and assume the mantle of leadership here. If you look at the parallel, uh, the American uh, independence movement, uh, we had uh, uh, just paragons of uh, intellectual and uh, political virtue, the Jeffersons, the Adamses, the Patrick Henrys, even the Alexander Hamiltons, but there was one man who stood out and had to stand out. Of course, that was George Washington. And that's exactly what we need at this point in time. Here is the man of undoubted integrity. Here is the man who has been telling us and warning us about these problems, not just for years, but for decades. Uh, here's the man who has proven right, and he needs to be the figure who stands in the forefront of this movement to restore the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. And then he needs to find, uh, really, at the state level, more than anywhere else, I'm not so uh, concerned about finding them yet in, in Washington, D.C., but at the state level, leaders of that caliber, with the integrity, with the uh, political acumen, with the willingness to take on this project, not simply because their own political careers might be advanced, because initially I think they won't be, but because the welfare of the American people will be advanced. And then he needs to bring in, with that group, a sizable number of advisors who have well, what I would call a, uh, a fair track record on these economic and political issues. If he wants to call on me as an advisor, I'll be perfectly willing uh, to come forward and work with him. And I think that there are probably dozens or hundreds of others like me out in the country that would say and do exactly the same thing. But it needs his leadership. He is the national figure here. He is the one whom everyone on either side of the political uh, yellow line, if you will, recognizes. They recognize him for his personal integrity. They recognize him for the leadership role he's taken at the national level. And ultimately, they recognize this is a man who not only has been right, but has never compromised his principles, which is the real key. Because what's gone on in the destruction of our constitutional system is the systematic compromise and prostitution of principles 
for politicians in order to advance their personal careers. And this is one man who's never done that. The only one I can think of, really, at that level who has not done it. Yes, sir. So people need to get to him and urge him, urge him with a capital U, to step forward as, the, as essentially his last act in the political arena to take on and begin this project. I can feel history rising. I can feel the spirit of 1776 like I've never felt it, listeners. You, you know that. This is the most important broadcast we've ever done. And uh, Dr. Vieira feels it. I feel it. You can see it. And, and here's what must be understood. Campaign for Liberty are great people. I, I've gotten mad at, at some of the folks there trying to you know, play patty cakes, some of the young men that have become political consultants for the mainline Republican Party. Folks that have married into the Pauls like Jesse Benton, you know, people like Jack Hunter that are involved, uh, who, who, you know, go out to eat with billionaires and kind of get stars in their eyes. They're not bad guys. They're just, they're just not Ron Paul. Rand Paul, I've known for 15, 16 years. He used to come on and campaign for his dad. Uh, we, he's a good guy. He's just up there trying to position himself, uh, you know, to be able to win the presidency later, and I get that. That's not going to happen, folks. In four years, in eight years, the globalists are going to win, or it's going to be a civil war. we got to be all in now, folks. That's why they're moving so fast. I've got three children, and I, I, I've got to sit there with my wife, who's extremely intelligent, and she, you know, has degrees in history, and she's like, okay, but, you know, we got to get out of here, and she's lived all over the world. And her dad worked for the, the Department of Agriculture. And she's like, we got to get out of here. And I've got to say, no, we're, we're putting it all on the line. We're staying. I've signed my name to the new Declaration of Independence. I'm all in, folks. I mean, I've got dirty tricks happening to me you wouldn't believe. You, you just, it, it, it's like a movie. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm all in. Because, folks, there's nowhere to run. This is history. And people that are scared, you don't understand. You should be scared of not taking action. And... There are people in Campaign for Liberty who will say, oh, let's just work with the system. Let's take over the Republicans. And they have been getting people like uh, Cruz elected over the neocon, you know, in the Senate uh, here in Texas. They're getting a lot of good people in who, at least on the surface, are saying the right thing. So Campaign for Liberty, I've analyzed all this. As, as Dr. Vieira is breaking down, he's analyzed it. Campaign for Liberty already knows who the good guys are in all the states. It's already got all our money. We gave it. It's got everything. It, it is the zenith. It is the launch pad. It is the fulcrum. It is the, it is the progenitor. As I said in the first hour, we're three years out, two to three years. We have to launch now. History is repeating itself, and the entire globalist operation is designed to stop a states' rights restoration movement that Dr. Vieira has laid out to Ron Paul. And again, Ron Paul gets has his own ideas historically going to the same documents, but he sources Dr. Vieira and his battle plan. Uh, Dr. Fine, you know, both constitutional you know, lawyers, PhDs. This is it. But I separately have gone and done the research, and it is it is it is incredible, sir. Thank you so much. I hope you'll come back very soon to really lay out some battle plans. I know you've already laid them out, but if if you'd put out articles, it's 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 articles that lay it out. We're writing an article that others can add to. I think we should all invade. Anybody can do it. Whitehouse.gov forward slash petitions, and everyone should codify their own ideas of a restoration. Uh, and we see the authoritarian lust. The Democrats want to get a civil war going. Uh, we need to reach out to the military and police now. This is a very perilous time we're in, and uh, they're going to call us secessionist. So I just simply say restorationist through the states reconvening a, 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 a constitutional uh, Congress. And uh, so we need you, the constitutional lawyers and others, uh, to codify different plans, to help Ron Paul adopt a strategy, and to launch now. Uh, any other points you'd like to make, Doctor? America is the last bastion of human freedom in the world today. This is our responsibility as Americans. And my view has always been we need to take action immediately, if not sooner. We can't wait for Rand Paul. For, uh, do you agree we don't have four to eight years to play patty cake with the Republicans? No, because the economic freight train is coming down the tracks at us at a very high velocity. We can't avoid that. And what will be the political consequences of a complete breakup of the international banking system? And they're going to use that meltdown as Absolutely. a way to... Absolutely. They'll, they'll try to use it for their benefit. 
And we're facing that, and they're not going to be able to prevent it from happening, but they're going to try and use it. We're facing that train wreck, and we have to prepare ourselves to deal with that now. 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 That's right. That's I, the operative word. I pledge myself, doctor, to you and Dr. Paul, I pledge myself to my family before God on the altar of liberty, as Thomas Jefferson said. I swear eternal resistance to every form of tyranny over the mind of humankind. And I know you pledge with me now, and the listeners pledge. We aren't going to stop. We're drafting Ron Paul. We're drafting all liberty lovers. Go to your state houses now. Go visit the state reps. Go visit your Congress people now. Ring the bell of liberty. Ride like Paul Revere. Get your banners out. We have begun the restoration. Nothing will stop it. Do you pledge that with me, Dr. Vieira? Absolutely. I've been doing that for a long time, Alex. I know, but I'm just all of us here together. That's right. We have our work cut out for us. What is you the, know what the, what's the old saying? When the going gets tough, the tough get going. It's always darkest before the dawn. It had That's to right. get, It had to get bad before people get up. That's right. And now is the time. And they want to start the civil war with the gun confiscation. We've got a race now to, to accelerate our operations against them. It may be able to back them off and buy us time. But, uh, uh, sir, what is, I know there's a lot of sites that post your great articles, your books, your materials. Where's the best place to find your, uh, your information? Uh, right now it's at newswithviews.com. One word, newswithviews. Dot com. Yes, sir. Excellent material. All right, we've got our work cut out, but uh, the uh, the tide and the affairs of men, when taken at the flood, leads on to liberty. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Alex. Bye bye. All right, there he goes, ladies and gentlemen. And, and, and again, now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. I do not have words to describe. We're going to cover it more on the nightly news tonight. We're going to cover it more tomorrow. On the Sunday show, I'll be live. I'm going to play large excerpts of this. I want to play a particularly powerful part of the 40 nine-minute speech that Ron Paul gave on the House floor. He called it questions. Excessive government has created such a prompts many questions. He goes through those. We'll go to break with that. Then we're going to come back with his conclusion, how we've been conquered by world government. Only admitting we've been conquered fraudulently. you got to admit you're a slave before you start becoming free. And, 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 and let me tell you, the greatest honor I've ever had, the greatest treasure even above my children, because they have no future if we don't win, is that God saw fit to take a wretch like me and, and, and to rise me up in all the things that happened in my life to, to prepare me for this moment of what we're beginning now. The bell cannot be unrung. To know with surety that we're going to win. If God be with us, who can stand against us? And it's time for everyone who's in thought and everything else to repent before God I even repent for nasty things I've said about Glenn Beck. I should have responded to him more gentlemanly. I apologize for when he said bad things about me being worldly. We don't have time for this. We don't have time to fight with each other anymore. We don't have time for all this uh, petty stuff. We have got to come together, all of us. So I repent for my trespasses. Do you repent for yours? All of my enemies out there, please come in for the big win. Please realize how much trouble we're in. Realize how much danger we're in. These globalists are dangerous. We, we, we have to get involved now. We have to get aggressive now. We have to go out and wake up everybody we can now. And then we come back in the next segment, his conclusion. You know, we've put with this show eugenics back on the map. We've put the fact that we're conquered on the map with that nomenclature. The truth. The truth will set us free. Admit how far we've fallen. Admit how pathetic we've gotten. Only then can we rise again. And Ron Paul is now getting more hardcore because that's all he can do. Now that Ron Paul's leaving Congress, now that his son's in the Senate, all this, Ron Paul, it's time to come out both barrels. I know you're a man after my own heart. I know you know what I know. Say it all. Lay it out. Throw yourself against the New World Order, and all of us will as well. And let all the rest of the Campaign for Liberty establishment types that have infiltrated, let them hit the streets. They're already getting their big Republican jobs. I know you've purged them. It's good. Good. Because there is no future now. All in. Here's part of Ron Paul's speech. We'll go to break and finish up with the rest of it. Here he is saying some questions. And he lists the incredible tyranny we're under. And I have some other points. Here it is. I have a few questions. Excessive government has created such a mess, it prompts many questions. 
Why are sick people who, are, who use medical marijuana put in prison? Why does the federal government restrict the drinking of raw milk? Why can't American manufacturers manufactures rope and other products from hemp? Why are Americans not allowed to use gold and silver as legal tender as mandated by the Constitution? Why is Germany concerned enough to consider repatriating their gold held by the Fed for her in New York? Is it that the trust in the U.S. and dollar supremacy beginning to wane? Why do our political leaders believe it's necessary to thoroughly audit? Why do our political leaders believe it's unnecessary to thoroughly audit our own gold? Why can't Americans decide which type of light bulbs they can buy? Why is it the TSA permitted to abuse the rights of any American traveling by air? Why should there be mandatory sentences even up to life for crimes without victims as our drug laws require? Why have we allowed the federal government to regulate commodes in our homes? Why is it political suicide for anyone to criticize APAC? Why haven't we given up on the drug war since it's an obvious failure and violates the people's rights? Has nobody noticed that the authorities can't even keep drugs out of the prisons? How can making our entire society a prison solve the problem? Why do we sacrifice so much getting, nece getting necessarily involved in border disputes and civil strife around the world and ignore the root cause of the most dangerous, deadly border in the world, the one between Mexico and the United States? Why does Congress willingly give up its prerogatives to the executive branch? Why does changing the party in power never change policy? Could it be that the views of both parties are essentially the same? Why did the big banks, the large corporations, and foreign banks, and foreign central banks get bailed out in 2008, and the middle class lost their jobs and their homes? Why do so many in the government and the federal officials uh, believe that creating money out of thin air creates wealth? Why do so many accept the deeply flawed principle that government bureaucrats and politicians can protect us from ourselves without totally destroying the principle of liberty? Why Folks, can't people understand that we're going to come back and finish up the why part of this, uh, and then we're going to get to the most powerful. The whole thing, though, he says we have a cancerous group of psychopaths. That's a quote. Running things. I mean, he lays it all out. World government, we're conquered. It is unbelievable. 49 minutes. And we're just going to cover it and cover it and cover it. Uh, Ron Paul is standing up. I mean, it's time to go 110% into the eye of the enemy.